Thanks. Uh, sorry, silicon is written there. Uh, I still miss uh, one word, libre. Uh, okay, um, I like to talk today uh, how to get into your own free or libre silicon. Um, as you are all deal with processors, me too, um, I still miss the possibility to produce the pro uh, processor afterwards, after my uh, design, on a free and uh, open process. I can go to the foundry, uh, uh, <coughs> but it takes me a lot of money and uh, it's difficult to publish the design afterwards. So, uh, the current situation. Uh, it's very bad, as you can imagine. I think you're all very firm with the business. So let's assume. Imagine you like to manufacture a chip, right? You're doing all your stuff. You are fine. Maybe you're an analog designer. You're uh, <coughs> uh, painting your transistors. So all your stuff is ready. But first, you have to go to the foundry. You can't choose the foundry at first, so you can just get the repetition of the foundry, but you can't compare the foundries itself. You can compare the marketing stuff, but not the technology is itself. So you have to sign three NDAs. The first one is just the process kit, process kit, how it's called, that, that's the technology itself which resistance uh, every layer has, which capacitance between different layers, and all the all this stuff all the silicon guys know, We have to know. The next one is the standard cell uh, library. <laughs> Mostly someone takes a one from Synopsys or other companies, but uh, <coughs> you have to sign an NDA also for that, the second one. The third one, you just sign for the purchase details. That means uh, how many wafer the foundry could deliver during one month maximum, or the other way around. How many wafers do you uh, commit to take from the fab every month, at least? Uh, how much um, ships on the wafer? which yield you would expect for that. And all the stuff, it's a third NDA. So you have signed three times with your own blood a huge bunch of papers, right? Just to produce a chip. And the next one, uh, which can cost your job, it's the money, just for the, uh, for the layout. You take a bunch of money, millions we talk about, or more, lay it on the table, so the foundry can deal uh, with your chip for the layout. They're doing all the stuff in layout, uh, which should fit to the process keys, to the standard cell libraries, and so on. And in the end, you get your pay for the mask. Uh, the mask sets uh, depends how Com uh, complicated the technology is. It, it's some fun, let's say a couple, 15, 20 masks up to, I don't remember the highest count I had, something around 40, 50 masks. But the masks you paid for are not yours. They are doesn't leave the foundry. Yes? So uh, if there's a reason to change the foundry, all the money you have invested for that, it's gone. Right? <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> um, so, reasons are the technology for the next foundry you choose as an alternative. It's completely different. You can't compare one technology with another. The standard cells are mostly different. Maybe you have the one from synopsis and take synopsis on the next technology. Technology also, okay, fine. Um, or <coughs> uh, the stuff with the mask, even if you ha would have the possibility to take your mask out of the first foundry, you can bring it in the next one and say, make my own chip. No, it doesn't work. So that's a big issue. 
you burned money, money, money. So what we can do? Um, this one, make yourself independent. Design your own process. It sounds strange, but it's possible. And if you like, you can take part. Okay, what happened so far? We are already doing that. We're talking about Libre Silicon. You're all ready on the way. Uh, David, it's a guy from Switzerland. Um, last year, opens the possibility on a foundry. He found a, a small clean room, which uh, <coughs> depends on a, a university in Hong Kong, which is okay, you can rent our equipment for a feasible or reasonable money. He gets some foundations for that. And at the end of last year, he gave a talk on a Cars Communication Congress. It's an event in, in Germany, Leipzig, some, uh, let's say, between Christmas and New Year. So since then, in 2018, we are working together on that, together with a much more uh, guys, uh, not David o alone. So we are developing now our first version, one micron. It doesn't sound very ambitious, but that's a step or the note you can still find in the textbooks. If you're doing a small research about that, you find the whole process, one micron, roughly. All the stuff which is smaller, you find can find dedicated items in the textbook, but not the whole process at all. So the knowledge for on univers universities or for students is also limited already. So uh, we are working on a standard cell library. We need them just for synthesizing RISC-V or something like that. Um, the tools which are open source and free on the market in that area, let's say they are a little bit old fashioned, let's say, or buggy. We have to renew it, we have to refurbish the tool chain just to make it usable. And currently, we have our first test wafer design. It's not completely or not complete now. Uh, we have to rework some issues. We had a review last week and we decided to shrink it a little bit so we can place more dice on one wafer. Just for the statistics. If we have one wafer with a couple of, of dice, it's not so good. We need bigger numbers. So uh, with that test wafer, with the structures on that, we want to measure all the structures, all the parameters for the transistors, for the capacitance, for the resistance, all the stuff, and put them in a SPICE model. With that SPICE model, we can develop the standard cell library further. We can size the transistors. We can uh, yeah, calculate all the stuff. And we're shrinking now the wave I've said about. Yes, OK. And, uh, the, tech, uh, the equipment we have rented in, the, in Hong Kong, it's feasible for smaller nodes. We are just on one micron, but the technology there allows us to use already no, uh, 0 0.5 microns. So we can just sum two nodes. It would be nice, but first we like one micron. Uh, the reason, by the way, is also that it's a uh, five volt tolerant. So every maker w would love it because you can just play with five volts and uh, doesn't have the trouble with low, low voltage. And it's, it's more robust. So it's more difficult to make serious failures with one micron. So for us, it's a very good starting point. Okay, that's a couple of links. First, the process where we are doing that on GitHub. The second is the test wafer. So um, we have to update some stuff there uh, after the review. The standard cells, okay, I'm working on standard cells. And more than, and it was in springtime, now it was heavy uh, in 34 for the test wafer. And the tool chain. 
for the tool chains, we already have a um, hackathon for that. Okay, what's the left? Um, we have to shrink the wafer, we have to finish it, we have to review the stuff, because even in that technology we are using, the mass uh, amount of money, so we don't want to waste money away. We are reviewing the mask again. Uh, we found, for instance, there's a missing layer in the GDS2. So it's, let's see, <laughs> it could be uh, go wrong. Uh, the documentation we have to update now, how we want to measure, what we are measuring, and why. So there's a lot of paperwork while the mask process is, is working on the, well, manufacturing is working on the lab there. Uh, we have to transfer afterwards all the parameters we are measuring into SPICE models. That's also a huge work. Um, we have to, uh, yes, we have to manufacture the wafers if the mask arriving and doing all the measurement. We already uh, assigned for the safety training on the lab, which also takes a lot of uh, effort. We have uh, the process refinement, so we can say, okay, we make it better, we have an issue here, or we can go to the next node. The standard cells has to be finished. They are currently somewhere around 40 up and running, but there is no ledge uh, still, there is no flip-flop, there is no, nothing with storage, right? Um, and if we are doing all the stuff in the lab, which is, let's say, a very manual manufacturing process, we have to refine our process or just to try it on the mass production. In Hong Kong also is the fab which is doing something like greeting cards, you know the things uh, you're opening and it plays jingle bells, so uh, this uh, Foundry is uh, very open-minded to uh, take our process and just to try it out, give him a try, and we can do mass production. Now, for one micron, okay, but it's a, it's the first step. And with that mon uh, one micron step on the mass production, we like to manufacture a microcontroller, a smaller one. So that's the stuff for, for next year. Okay, targets, well, let's assume that. Um, the license, we like uh, to use, uh, or we have to use a new <coughs> license for that, because if we are using a GPL, something with copy left, we are just uh, uh, protecting the, let's say, the documentation or the, the software can protect with that. But with the GPL, we can't protect hardware itself. So no chips, no boards, and something like that. We also looked at other uh, licenses which claim to be hardware available, like the CERN from, yeah, from the institution <laughs> there. Um, but we are, don't, we are not so happy with that. So um, we like that our process can be done uh, for everybody without an issue. So if we going to the copy left, it would also mean we would exclude someone which uh, says, okay, I have my own stuff which isn't under GPL and put it together on the, on the wafer. I don't know, does it work or not? I am not a layer, so um, it, the license is more, let's say, something like BSD stuff for everybody. We don't want to exclude someone. And even if you are doing the stuff in your basement, maybe you're a talented uh, mechanic which can do some machines for that, um, yes, you are free to use it. And if there is a foundry which say, okay, it's a nice process, the foundry also could have the possibility to use the process. But let's say, be earnest in that case, a foundry nowadays, which has small process nodes up and running. They don't like our process, which is quite huge with one micron, because our process, or just to take, or just to try our process, 
would be disturbance to the another process. Because if they are doing our process and afterwards going back to his own, they have to readjust all the machines for that again. So they can't put use for a longer time wafers, but you have a lot of effort. So foundries for us, I would say, are not competitive. Establishment. Maybe there's something which say, okay, I, I like to be part of the open source movement. I open my foundry for the open source process. Could be happen. Would be nice. Universities also need uh, for ed educational purposes something like to open, to show for students. Still remember three NDAs? How the u university will show stuff how to deal with uh, silicon now. If all the stuff is proprietary under NDA, the univers university can't do that. So the Libre Silicon, our free process, could be helped in that case. So, and u universities have still some labs, like in Hong Kong. Okay, we like that our process is transferable. So imagine there's one fab which uh, offers our process, there's another. So in that case, we have the possibility to take the mask set from one foundry and go to another. Or just to say, okay, uh, what happened, let's say uh, we are a big player, we have uh, some security or safety stuff and say, okay, we need a second source. How do you do a second source with all the NDAs? You can't. So in that case, if you're using that process and you have two foundries which manufacture the same process, you have a second source because you can double the mask set and use it on one side and use it on another. Okay. Uh, education, okay, analog stuff is also a, a big issue. Um, you, I think, I assume you're mostly a digital guy or RTL and so on. So the analog guys are, let's say, a minority under us. And this minority needs uh, a good uh, educational background. You know, yeah, the, the guys are well paid. They get, earn more money than I can dream. So, but they have to learn about that. But the analog guys, if they are learning, um, let's say, a digital analog converter, and Sigma Delta, all the stuff, you know, if they are learning stuff, if you're able to doing that, they are fixed, they are locked in to one technology. They can't use the same schematic and put it on another process, because all the process parameter, uh, parameter are various. So the process kit is different. That means just an analog transistor from one technology couldn't work. Well, let's say uh, you can't assure that the same transistor from one technology works on another. So that's an issue. If you have a process which is common, open source, usable for all, and the analog designer would uh, design on that process, he can say, okay, my design now, my analog stuff, my 555 ship works from that foundry and from that. And I used only one design. Okay, context. How to work together with us, if you like. We are uh, meeting us every Sunday at 9 p.m. Uh, in Hong Kong time, so you have to calculate your own home zone for that. Um, that's the server IP and the port number. It's completely free. You don't need to register for that. Came in and listen and talk with us. We have a mailing list up and running. Uh, and yes, thanks for listening. Thank you very much. Questions? Oh. I will just start in the front. So when are you anticipating, you know, opening up for first, uh, you know, for first commercial wafers, test chips, 
And w what do you estimate will be realistic commercial cost per one, one wafer? I don't know, for one micron, how big are the wafers, but whatever uh, is the size, okay, 16 uh, or 8 inch. One, what? one micron isn't so heavy in cost. Uh, usually, uh, let's see, our test wafer have now 15 or 16 masks, and it would cost us something about, oh, we calculate that, 12,000 Hong Kong dollar. So it's, it's something around uh, one eighth or nine you get euros. So divide by nine and you get euros. So it's something thousand, 1,200 or something like that. Euros, euros for each uh, complete mask set for the test wafer. So that's the cost for that. Uh, but by the way, uh, the equipment there is something like um, collected, I would say. So they have machines which are uh, feasible for four inches on wafer, and they have machines which are up for, uh, to six inches. So uh, based on our process and the machines we like to use, we are now sticked on four inches. But that's an issue. The mask itself is also four inches, but has a uh, factor of five by one. So it's OK. We can produce even bigger uh, wafers later in the mass production, they have five or six inches. So cost, I don't, I, I can't estimate. I just can estimate how, uh, which time we are up and running. So the test wafer is our issue for this year. And the first microcontroller with m one micron, let's say, uh, it, it gets in the range from, uh, of a um, um, 68 key processor, the old stuff from micro, I think, Something like that in, in the number of transistors uh, could be in spring next year. So that's the time schedule. And the, the processor could be the first chip which gives us some money back. So, so, so do you have an interface for signing up? Hmm? Do you have an interface for... For, for ordering? No, we don't have something for ordering. <laughs> so do you know what I mean? Like how, how if, if I have a project that I want to run, how do I sign up? Uh, contact us. We don't have such an infrastructure. No. Can you go back to the mailing list? Okay. Uh. Oh, that's a mailing list again. Okay. Um, yeah. Um. Two very quick ones. First, when do you think you'll have SRAM models available? And oh, second, yeah. Okay, you know, is the, the standard cell library stuff, is, uh, it's my uh, daddy. So, um, yes, uh, ledgers are hard. SRAMs we already talked about, we think about. Um, I would say the first chip, the first microcontroller, would be without SRAM, but with ledgers. So, we would fake something with ledgers if we need storage. The next generation, which we can imagine could be on risk five, let's say on three by three uh, square millimeters, this uh, should have SRAM. And yes, there's a project which uh, allows us to um, uh, generate SRAMs by a script. Most of the SRAMs or RAMs memory structures are generated. So you see, okay, that's a primitive, which has roughly six T cell, and the ordering result with uh, address latches and, and all the drivers and so on. That is just generated by a script. So this project is nice. We can use it. It works. But we have to design the six T cells and the address decoder and stuff. So I think it's something in the next year. Okay, brilliant. I have another question for you, but I'll take that offline. Okay, thank you. So can we have another one or two questions? My name is Arndt. Uh, two maybe interrelated questions, if you feel able to answer them. One is, do you have a vision for what kind of market would buy your chips and maybe related? Can you say anything about you, how you finance your current work? OK, uh, yes. Uh, the first is how. Uh, Okay, that's our market. Uh, David and, and me, we are from the CCC uh, in Germany. Um, it's a Chaos Computer Club. 
with something like the hacker culture. So if we came up with the next Congress and say, okay, that's our nice uh, CPU, it works. So we are sold out during one day, I would say. Um, because in that, uh, in that, we have just manual manufacturing, you know, we, we don't have the possibility to, to doing thousands of wafer per day. Um, <clears throat> could be nice. And the, um, Yes, uh, the market is something like, I would say um, for us, uh, freaks which like uh, blinking LEDs or something like that, you know, uh, uh, small boards, uh, even the thing with, uh, with Raspberry Pi, someone here uh, replaced the Raspberry Pi by an RISC V. It's possible for us also, not just really with one micron, but with the next step, let's say point, uh, yeah, 0.5 micron, or steps behind. So it's possible. And uh, it also could be something like um, customers, which are very uh, secure aware, because if uh, the customer say, okay, I have an issue, if someone put a backdoor on my chip, you know, all the defense stuff, all like that, um, and they don't can trust the foundry. We can, uh, with our open source developed process and open source process where all the stuff is open, and even one micro, you can look at, on a micro, uh, microscope, can p take in picture, can reverse engineer your own chip and say, okay, I don't find a backdoor. It's my own chip as I send it to the fab. Okay, sorry, I have to cut. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's thank the speaker again.